How's it going, everybody? It's another beautiful day. Uh, I'm starting to feel a lot better. I appreciate everybody's well wishes for my family and I getting better. Um, so it's been pretty hot here in South Carolina where we're at, and how I had my tomato plants planted in our in the five gallon buckets, it really affected them this year. Um, you know, I watered them, stayed on them, and we did get some pretty good. Um, tomatoes off of them but just right now they're they're stunted it's just the the growth isn't that good so we decided that we're gonna pull them up and get stuff get the buckets ready for some fall and winter um, crops so that's what we've done so far I pulled the other the big bucket down that had the upside down tomato plant in it but we decided that we were gonna keep the other bucket planted because you know we homeschool and what better way to learn about insects and and other things than to watch insects and stuff like that grow and feed and 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 how they work <clears throat> so what we did we found some more hornworms on our other um, tomato plant that we have here and so Zoe and Chastity and Wade have been watching the hornworms, just kind of seeing what they do, how they're eating, and just, so we basically just sacrifice this, this tomato plant to them. Well, along with that, you know, they've, they looked up and they found the hornworms turn into the moths and they can help pollinate and stuff like that. But while they're worms, they of course are bad, you know they're, they're parasites to the garden you know of course they they eat up a whole bunch of your foliage and that's why people don't want them around i know there's a good um i was listening to a podcast and the guy was talking about he this person has basically a sacrifice garden away for a good bit away from where his normal you know food garden is that he'll have like plant a couple of tomato plants so when he finds hornworms on his tomato plants he'll take them off and take them to the sacrifice garden and um let them do their thing and turn into the moths and fly off well we don't have that so that's the reason we popped them off and gave them to our chickens and and things like that because that's what that was our only little garden yield we might do something like that next year uh, just because it's, it's a more not saying that you shouldn't kill them but it's a, it's a little bit more holistic way of of gardening you're taking a life and and letting it flourish and grow into another stage stage of its life to become something better so that's an that's an idea um but right now so they've been watching these hornworms and they wanted to see them grow there's two on this plant that i know of well we came out today and we we're looking at them and zoe was like daddy there's these white pods on this hornworm and I was like, oh yeah, I've seen pictures of that before. And I just never read it and, and looked into it. Well, so, you can see them. I was like, wow, that's, that's cool. So uh, let, me, let me look it up and find out what it is. So these little cocoons on the hornworms are actually... And I might butcher this. Braconid wasp eggs. <clears throat> and what they do is they'll actually lay them on the hornworm and allow the hornworm to be the host for the larvae and then they'll grow. And these wasps actually will burrow into the hornworm and eat the insides and use it to grow. And then once they hatch out and go off, they are a beneficial insect to the garden because they'll actually go and eat other caterpillars um squash beetles other beetles aphids and things like that so i told him i said don't touch it i said you know let's, this is another learning experience for us so let's watch this progress and and you know we get to learn a little bit more about a symbiotic relationship other than just these hornworms eating our tomato plants so 
that's what we're we're gonna see what happens the other hornworm is fine i don't see any any um eggs or or white pods on it so it's very interesting to see how something else uses another it's, it's almost like it's a parasite in a, in a form because it's a parasitic to the hornworm but and the hornworm is also considered like a parasite to the tomatoes and pepper plants and things like that so i don't know it's it's, it's neat to really see nature working the way nature is supposed to work so we're going to leave it alone and we're going to keep an eye on it but i just thought it was neat i wanted to share that experience with y'all we're doing with zoe and wade um allowing them to learn along with you know the things that we're teaching them that we're teaching them on the homestead so if you didn't know what those little white pods are on a hornworm they are braconid or braconid wasp eggs that will eventually turn into larvae and eat the hornworm and and there you go so it's just it's just neat the, the different things that we learn different things that we never really thought that we would learn um you know when you homestead you think okay i'm gonna learn <clears throat> yeah i'll learn i'll learn parasites and these different little insects that are gonna harm my my garden but you never thought you'd, you'd find yourself like rooting on the, a wasp you know you hear wasps be like oh i can get stung but apparently this thing is is very helpful so all right quick little update for the end of this video um now the eggs are on both of the hornworms so i did just see the little wasps flying around not like it just happened but now that i've looked into it and seen what they look like i now know what to look for but i thought one of them was going to one of the uh hornworms was going to be able to survive and cocoon and turn into the hummingbird moth or hawk moth or whatever whichever one you want to call it so but it seems like both of them are now sacrificed to the wasp and we shall see what happens from here so appreciate you hanging out with me for this little bit of time and We'll catch you in the next one.